quadratic equations and the discriminant. This general quadratic equation can be solved using the quadratic formula. So anything in this form can be solved using this quadratic formula. Now the number of solutions that you get to an equation like this depends on the value here, b squared minus 4ac. If b squared minus 4ac, if this value inside the square root, inside the third, is negative, clearly you cannot work out the square root of a negative number. In that case, there will be no solutions. If b squared minus 4ac, so this value inside the third here, is a positive value, then you will get a plus or minus this section here, this part here, so you have two solutions, or two roots. Another option is if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, so then you're doing the square root of 0, that's 0, so in the formula all you have is minus b over 2a because this part becomes 0. In that case, as you can see from here, x is equal to this value here, so you have a single root, which is sometimes called a repeated root. You need to memorize all of these conditions for the discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. It gives you information as to the number of roots a particular quadratic equation may have. So if the discriminant is a positive value, so greater than zero, then you have two roots. So for a U-shaped curve, you may have something like this, an N-shaped curve, something like this, where the curve goes through the x-axis twice. If the discriminant is zero, then you have a single root, or a repeated root. And as you can see from the examples here, this curve just touches the x-axis at a single point, and so does this one. So there is only one root in each of these. If the discriminant is a negative value, so less than zero, then you have no roots. That's to be expected because the curve does not interact with the x-axis. So there are no roots. If the discriminant turns out to be a square number, this will suggest that you can factorize the quadratic equation that you're working with. So if you have a square number for the discriminant, you will be able to factorize your quadratic equation. So if you're trying to factorize a quadratic equation, and it's a difficult one, and you're not sure if it does factorize, because sometimes um, uh, quadratic equations don't factorize, then you may want to work out the discriminant first and check to see if you have a square number. So if the discriminant was something like uh, 1, 4, 9, 100, that kind of thing, square numbers, then uh, you know you can factorize. In this example, we have the quadratic equation here. So a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 2, and c is equal to minus 5. So we substitute the values into the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4 times a times c, and I've used brackets around each of the a, b and c values. Minus 2 squared is 4. A minus times a minus will give us a positive value. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 5 is 60. That gives 64. So what does that tell us about the 
equation 3x squared minus 2x minus 5, it tells us two things. First of all, this is a positive value. So we know there will be two roots because the discriminant is positive. Secondly, this is a square number, so we know that we can factorise this equation. Second example, we have the quadratic equation here, minus x squared plus 9 is equal to 0. Now it's an equation, so we could, if we wanted to, change the signs throughout, so you would have x squared minus 9 equals 0, and then continue from there. In this example, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to work with this equation. So a is equal to minus 1, that's the coefficient of the x squared term. b relates to the x term, the linear term. There is no x term here, so b is 0. And the constant c is 9. So the discriminant, b squared, minus 4 times a times c. 0 squared gives you 0. Minus times a minus will be a plus. 4 times 1 times 9 is 36. So we have a number that's positive. So if the discriminant is positive, that means we have two roots. It's a square number, so we know it will mean that this can be factorised. Minus x squared plus 9 equals 0 can be factorised. In case you're wondering how it factorises, um, I'm going to change the order of the term. So that was plus 9, that's still plus 9. That's minus x squared, and there's the minus x squared equals 0. 9 is the same as 3 squared. Difference of 2 squares, there's the difference. We have 2 squared terms. So it's 3 plus x times 3 minus x equals 0. So it does factorise. In this example, a is equal to 2, b is equal to, now there's nothing here, so there's a 1, b is equal to 1x, so b is equal to 1, c is equal to 1, and then putting these values into the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, 1 squared is 1, there's a minus here, these are all, well these two are positive, so the answer will be negative, 4 times 2 is 8 times 1 is 8, 1 minus 8 is minus 7, this is a negative number, so if the discriminant is negative, we have no roots. That means this equation here has no solutions. There's no value of x that you're about to substitute into here and here to make all of this equal to zero. No solutions. In this equation, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, c is equal to 1. The discriminant b squared minus 4 times a times c. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 times 1 is 4, but we have a minus here, which gives us 0. So what does that tell us about the number of roots or the number of solutions to our equation? If the discriminant is equal to 0, that means we have 1 root, which also means that the root is repeated. Repeated root. This also tells us that we can factorise the original equation. So let's have a go at factorising the original equation and see why we say that there is a repeated root. Okay, this is our equation. Factorising this, and there'll be a plus 1 
in each of these. So if we solve this factorized form of this quadratic equation, solving here, x plus 1, make that equal to 0 and solve that. And do the same here, x plus 1 is equal to 0, solve that to give you minus 1. So if you have the curve y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1, you'll find that this curve will just touch the x-axis at the point x equals minus 1, so there's only one root. But can you see that we have this twice, once from each of these factors? Hence, this is called a repeated root. This is the graph of y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And as you can see here, when x is equal to minus 1, the curve just touches the x-axis at that point and then goes up again. So x is equal to minus 1 is a root. And the equation that we were solving here was equal to 0, and it's equal to 0 because the y-coordinate on the x-axis right there is 0. So what we were solving was this, because the y-value there is 0. That's the point we're interested in. What can you say about the discriminant for this graph? Now that graph does not intersect the x-axis at any point. So we know there are no roots, which means the discriminant must be negative. So what we see from here is that v squared minus 4ac, in this case, should be less than 0. What, c what can you say about the dis discriminant for this graph? Clearly, you can see that there are two roots here and here. And if there are two roots, we know that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac should be positive.